Victoria Azarenka back to TC Live. It's great to see you, Vika. Tell us how you've been uh, passing the time during this hiatus. I think we all assume it's been very Leo-centric. Are we right about that? Uh, pretty much, yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> yes, and I've been, you know, trying to stay focused and trying to do my workouts and try to play tennis as much as possible, but it's such an unusual um, kind of feeling of staying at home after being used to travel so much. Even when I was a little bit away from tennis, I still did like a lot of things and I traveled a lot. And uh, now it's just like, it's like every day is kind of the same day. So you kind of lose the track. I keep my calendar, keep putting goals on the calendar just to make sure that I know which day of the week it is. Um, <laughs> it's 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 un, it's really unusual. I mean, it's the the motivation to like know what's coming next. We obviously nobody really knows yet, and try to get to stay informed as much as possible. But you know, this kind of unknown gives a lot of anxiety and motivation. Kind of goes down. I got to assume it does. Also, you've got a toddler on your hands. I mean, Leo's only what three years old, and he I'm from what I've seen of your beautiful boy. He's very active. He's very busy. Perhaps just a little bossy too. I mean, how much of your life is just about, you know, who's handling the pandemic better, you or your son? Well, I feel like he's ready to like, also like get out of the house. Um, probably like see other people, not just me and like his, his father and also like the nanny and stuff. So yeah, I think he's ready to like see other kids um, because I can see how much fun he gets like interacting with somebody else on FaceTime rather than just us but he's you know he's it's kind of interesting to see his like daily changes even like it's been like one month just with him and like his competitive side starts to come out and I don't really know where it's coming <laughs> from um and you don't? Class, like, he always wants to win like everything it's just impossible to play any kind of game with him if he doesn't win um, so that's been a little bit of challenge for me because I like to win as well <laughs> and I have to pretend that I'm losing for him all the time. So this drives me a little bit crazy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I know. Uh, yeah. Adjust, and you have to sacrifice. So, uh, I'm, I'm kind of sacrificing that. I'll bet you are. I want to go back to that, but I, I, you have to explain to me why you were so good in Australia. Why you won it that major twice? Was it was it that you had just come off a training block? Was it the heat? Was it the court surface? Was it the that you you loved playing in Melbourne? Why were you so good there? Well, I think the beginning of the season, the excitement is definitely one part of that. I felt that I've been you know kind of the most hungry and the most prepared in Australia. Um, and I, I really liked the vibe there. I felt that, you know, um, I just felt like really good emotionally, physically there. Um, from the first time I came there, you know, it's like from the juniors. I, I, I came there for the first time when I was a junior and I won. I won two tournaments. I was undefeated in Australia. So it, it, it goes back like, since I was 15, I think that feeling kind of when I came there for the first time, it kind of carried over the years and I, and I, and I've been like trying to hold on to the same feeling, I would say, but I would say that excitement of the beginning was always um, kind of a trigger for me to be more hungry. We are joined on TC Live by former world number one, two-time Australian Open champion Victoria Azarenka. Vika, we're starting to see some exhibitions come back in Germany and then the end of this week in the United States with no fans. I wonder where you stand on the idea of playing with no fans. Some players seem to be okay with it and others can't really seem to imagine the sport without the energy that the fans provide. What do you say? Well, I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure, like, I think without fans to have that thrill and that motivation will be a little bit hard um, to reproduce that, you know, that battlefield, because that's that's really what it's all about. I feel the best competitors that go out there is also we're also entertainers. So we want to be in front of the crowd. We want to, you know, have eyes on us for that moment. So 
I think it's going to be a little bit, for me, it would be a little bit weird, but we also practice so much without anybody looking. So, um, you know, in terms of tennis quality, I don't think that that can change much. But in terms of like emotional and entertainment part, I think it's going to be kind of hard without, um, without the crowd. Once again, Vika, you sound like your boy, Leo. He wants to be out there and in front of other people. And it sounds like that's what, something you'd want as well. Um, has this pandemic, uh, well, and, and motherhood, how much has your life changed in the last several years in terms of priorities? I mean, can you see yourself playing past this pandemic? And do you care about winning and losing as much now that you've got a little boy at your side? Unfortunately, yes. I do care about winning and losing. And I say unfortunately because I sometimes wish I was a little bit easier to look on the brighter side and focus a little bit in the moment and not just on the result. But do I see myself playing after the pandemic? Hopefully. I mean, if, if it doesn't last for 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to play. Um, but um, sorry, what was the other part of the question? Yeah. How I, I mean, how much, uh, how much yeah. does, uh, how much uh, are you this as can you be as good as you were when you won two Australian Opens or has too much change, too much time gone on? Have your priorities shifted? Well, priorities definitely have shifted. Can I be as good? Um, I don't yeah. think that there's a right way to compare to what was before. I feel like we always kind of um, get better. Um, sometimes, you know, I feel like I have a lot more experience. And once I feel like I can find a little bit of a better balance. And I, and that's something I've been working on, you know, in terms of my priorities. Because I keep feeling this guilt when I go out and play. And uh, it's tough because I want to spend time with, with Leo and I want to do a lot of different things. But at the same time, something inside me, I still want to play and I still want to compete. So I think the, ba the key is here is, is to find that balance. And it's something that I've never really been facing before. It's always been about me. It's always been, you know, um, what I need to do for tennis. And now I need to kind of juggle two different things. So it's a little bit of a bigger challenge, I would say, than than before. But I feel I can do it. I wouldn't be playing if I didn't do it. I was, um, I can still do, you know, better than I was before. Right, well, Vika, we, we look forward to seeing you back out on the court when this whole thing is over. Thank you for spending some time today. Continued health to you. And the family, we'll see you soon.